Western states are very, very important to us. Uh, but this is a wonderful, wonderful start in Pennsylvania, not just to win, but to get the numbers that you just talked about. This is the beginning of the healing of America uh, after a really divisive a couple of decades. And I think that's, that's what this is really all about. Governor, back when you ran for president the last time around, you did something that a lot of people would thought was very forceful and effective before you lost. And I do think it has a lasting effect in this election. Someone once said that you had the most powerful, the most potent you ever spoken when you said you have the power. You did this kind of thing where you said to the voters, especially young voters, you can change. You, you may be coming across here tonight as the sort of the St. John the Baptist of this other guy without putting him on too high a power. I don't want to put him on that pedestal. But you did get this idea uh, Just as of, well, otherwise it'll be on Fox News. I sure know, order. they'll be making fun of all of us here, <laughs> uh, which is what they tend to do. Uh, but what do you think about that? You did start this uh, empowering thing, and then you turned out to be kind of a David Stern. You learned how to run the league. I mean, you, you, you had a 50-state strategy in 2006, and now we have a 50-state strategy in 2008. You came out as kind of a better manager than anybody thought you'd be. Right. I'm just getting you to agree well, how look, great you are, uh, I suppose, which isn't too hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, help, it, it helps to have a terrific candidate who's most articulate, which is great, but the most uh, terrific thing about this campaign has been its discipline. I've never seen a Democratic campaign more disciplined than this. Even the fabled 92 Clinton campaign, which is a wonderful campaign, this has been a great campaign. And Barack has really reached out to everybody in a disciplined way. Uh, there, there, of course, there are mistakes like everybody makes, but there weren't any big ones. They were thoughtful. There were no leaks. There was no backbiting. Mm -hmm. It's been a terrific campaign. Win or lose, uh, Barack Obama has set a real mark for what's going to happen uh, in this country, what we, what we hope will happen in this country for the next four or even eight years. Uh, a, a White House that's run uh, really in a disciplined way, a thoughtful way, and a White House that reaches out to working class and middle class Americans who really haven't been paid a lot of attention to for the last eight years. Thank you, Governor. Congratulations, perhaps. We'll see later tonight whether you deserve more congratulations than winning Pennsylvania. But I do believe, right. having watched this thing as you've watched it for all these weeks, that that was the main, the main salient, the main plan of the uh, McCain campaign was to win Pennsylvania away from your party and begin to lock it up. And the Keystone State is not there for the Republicans this year. Howard Dean, thank you very much. Keith, you mentioned out of Pennsylvania some of this exit poll mm -hmm. data, and uh, there's something that, based on my research, that really stands out. Obama won whites with college degrees 54 to 45. No Democrat has ever won, according to the University of Michigan survey, no Democrat has ever won white voters with a college education or more. So what happens in Pennsylvania, if it happens in the Mountain West, if it happens um, in Nevada, if it happens in the, you know, in the Outer South, what's called the Outer South, yeah. That may be a development we're talking a lot about tonight. So he is an elitist. So he is an elitist, <laughs> is what well, you're saying. Well, he's taking African Americans and, and adding upscale whites. I mean, I think it's important that we have this conversation about this is not just about an African American phenomenon. It's about ex it creating if, a new part of a coalition if it happens, if it's born if out of If those elsewhere. exit poll data are correct, he's yeah. very, very close. It's almost tied among whites, among whites right. in general. Uh, John Kerry lost whites by something like 14 points right. last time. Mm -hmm. it was, so that would be huge if that were a valid. Uh, if it's born out during the evening, and B, if, if we saw it in other places. Right. Again, we're talking about exit poll data so far out of Pennsylvania, and, and mm. that's it, but it's an important thing to look at. We want to go back to Lester Holt. He has results in the Senate, House, and governor races as well. Lester? We sure do, David. In fact, a change, a pickup in the Democrats. Let's go right to some of the calls we're making now. First, in that much-watched New Hampshire race, Gene Shanine, the former governor, we project will win in New Hampshire over John Sununu. Uh, Gene Shaheen in New Hampshire, we project, will win. That's a pickup for the Democrats. In Maine, this is a seat that the Democrats thought they could pick off. Susan Collins, though the Republican, will retain her seat. The incumbent, Susan Collins, will win in Maine tonight. In Delaware, no surprise that incumbent Joe Biden wins, so if the vice president thing doesn't come his way, he's got a job. In Illinois, Senator Dick Durbin. We project Senator Dick Durbin will win in Illinois. No doubt a bittersweet night for Dick Durbin. He lost his 40-year-old daughter this past Saturday to a congenital heart defect. But Dick Durbin wins, retains his Democratic seat in the state of Illinois. In Massachusetts, John Kerry retains his, his seat. John Kerry wins in the state of Massachusetts. In New Jersey, Frank Lautenberg will retain his seat, Democratic seat in New Jersey. Frank Lautenberg in New Jersey. 
in Tennessee, Lamar Alexander, the Republican we project, Lamar Alexander will win in the state of Tennessee. Now, in Mississippi, there's a race we're watching very carefully, a toss-up. This is an area, a uh, solidly red area, but in Mississippi, the incumbent, Roger Wicker, in a tight race with former Governor Ronnie Musgrove. We're calling that one too close to call right now in Mississippi. That's one of the seats that Democrats are hoping they can pick off on their path to perhaps a 60-seat majority in the Senate. We'll continue to watch that one. In Alabama, that's a Republican-held seat by Senator Jeff Sessions. Too early to call in that one, but Sessions is leading right now in Alabama. Also looking at another race in Mississippi, this is the uh, Republican incumbent, Senator Thad Cochran, uh, going up against former state representative Eric Fleming, and right now that one is too early to call. Oklahoma, Republican James Inhofe against State Senator Andrew Rice, the Democrat. That one right now is too early to call as well. So with that New Hampshire race now uh, going to the Democrat, let's show you where we stand now on our board. And that puts, uh, well, let me, there we go. It's 44-29 in this hour. Democrats now are up by two. What we're going to watch right now as the Democrats try and reach 60, they picked up uh, Virginia early on. New Mexico is another area that they think they can pick up tonight. That's an area where the Democratic challenger at an open seat uh, was a, had a double-digit lead. Uh, we're also watching Colorado, a similar story there. North Carolina is still out there. Watch that one very carefully. Uh, still no call to make on that one, but North Carolina, Elizabeth Dole, Kay Hagan, a very close race there. We'll continue to watch that. But again, at this hour, Democrats now plus two on their road uh, to picking up a larger majority in the U.S. Senate. Back to and you. And they are trying to march towards 60. Uh, Lester Holt, thank you very much. We want to get a break in here. But a, a couple of, of notes about the sadness that goes along on this campaign trail. Uh, the grandmother of Senator Obama uh, died just a day before the election day. Word out of Honolulu tonight that the absentee ballot from his late grandmother will indeed be counted, election officials in Hawaii said. And Senator Durbin holding on uh, in, in re-election. Uh, so difficult, the loss of his daughter this week. Uh, clouding, of course, uh, a night that he would celebrate if it goes well for Senator Obama, uh, who he, of course, instrumental in uh, getting him to run for president this year. As we go to a break now, uh, we want to show you some live pictures. Obama headquarters at Grant Park in Chicago, where the crowd is growing. Also McCain headquarters tonight, the Biltmore Hotel in Phoenix. And right here, Election Plaza in New York's 30 Rock, Rockefeller Plaza. Our election coverage continues on MSNBC right after this. for politics. Looking now at live pictures from the Palm Beach County Vote Tabulation Center in West Palm Beach, Florida. <laughs> Haven't we seen this movie before? <laughs> Carrie Sanders is joining us from there. Carrie, what are we seeing? What's going on? Well, David, right now we're looking at a picture of the uh, folks at the Palm Beach uh, Election Central here waiting for some of the data cards to come in. At the same time, in another part of the room, they're looking at absentee ballots. And uh, what they're looking at is whether the votes were done correctly. Some of them are rejected because they're missing signatures. Some of them have signatures that don't match those on file. And then some of them have problems. And I'm going to show you. In most of Florida, this is what the ballot looked like. Candidate, candidate B and you choose and you just fill in the zero. Palm Beach County does things a little bit differently. This is what the ballot looks like. Candidate A, candidate B. Some people make a little check mark there. Others put a dot in the center. Others put a box around it like that. The correct way to vote here is you connect one box to the other, and the theory is that you're creating an arrow to your candidate. 
that's a problem. We've heard from folks who voted here today that they weren't exactly sure what to do. So the canvassing board, which we have a picture of right now, is standing there looking at <coughs> some of the ballots. These are absentee ballots. And interestingly, in this picture, the attorney that you see standing in the center with the bow tie, well, that's J. Reed Bright. He was the attorney who represented Bush in 2000. And to the screen on the right, the gentleman in the blue polka dot tie who's sort of looking down there, yeah. that's Gerald Richmond. Jerry was the attorney who represented Gore in 2000. They've been through this before. They're looking at the ballots and they're discussing whether they should be included or rejected. It certainly has shades of 2000 all over again. Oh, yeah. But the good news is the system is working, David. It appears that across the state, the polls which are now closed have folks in line. They'll be able to vote as long as they were in line by 7 o'clock, whether they were in the eastern time zone or out in the panhandle, one time zone over. But thus far, no serious problems revealed in Florida, where, of course, it's a toss-up state and a state that has had problems in the past, David. And, Kerry Sanders, thank you. It is a state at this hour that is still too close to call. Ann Curry is looking at our exit polling tonight, and she joins us once again. Ann. That's right, David. Good evening. You've already called the battleground state of Pennsylvania for Barack Obama. Well, we have some exit poll numbers tonight that indicate just how Obama did it. Ninety percent of Pennsylvania voters told us the economy is not good and that they voted overwhelmingly for Barack Obama. Also, as you've been reporting, a lot has been made about who would get the white working class voters who voted for Hillary Rodham Clinton in the primaries. Well, it turns out they went for Barack Obama. We'll have more on the Pennsylvania vote as the night progresses. Also, Brian, or rather her David, there's also a new development out of North Carolina. So far, Barack Obama is winning more white votes in North Carolina than John Kerry did in 2004. And look at this. While 75% of white voters in North Carolina said that race was not a factor in their vote today, 24% said that it was a factor. And of that 24%, 69% of them went for John McCain. But look at this. 30% of whites in North Carolina who said race was a factor still voted for Barack Obama, David. And Curry, thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Gene, is there anything to make of that if you look at some of those, uh, for those who say that race was a factor? Yeah, I... Uh, yeah, you know what, I'm I sorry. Quite Ponder know. that question. I, actually, I have to get to a break. Ponder the question while we go to a break. Though. Coming up at 8.30 Eastern, the first polls close in Arkansas, representing six electoral votes. We'll have the results and some characterizations when we return. CNN can now project that New Hampshire will go for Barack Obama. New Hampshire, uh, this is a obviously very, very painful for Senator McCain because he desperately wanted New Hampshire. That's where he really got going in his bid for the Republican presidential nominations. But based on the exit polls, based on the actual numbers coming in, uh, CNN projects that New Hampshire and its four electoral votes will go for Barack Obama. Nine percent of the precincts have reported. Right now, Senator Obama has 60 percent of the vote in New Hampshire, 39 percent for Senator McCain. Uh, that's an advantage of 14,000 397, under 10 percent of the precincts reporting. As I said, this is the state that Senator McCain really wanted to win. He was very sentimental about all those town hall meetings he did there in jump-starting his campaign early on after Iowa. But New Hampshire, New Hampshire will go for Senator for Senator o Obama. Bill Schneider and Soledad O'Brien are at voter analysis right now at the CNN Election Center. Uh, Soledad, uh, what are we seeing? Why are we giving New Hampshire to Senator Obama? Let's go right to the voter analysis board. A uh, couple of interesting categories which really explain it all. So if you pull up New Hampshire here on our board. Which should be blue. Okay, and let's take a look first. Highly educated voters, that's always been a good category for Barack Obama. That's right. Voters with a postgraduate degree, the top of the educational category, this was one of the top uh, groups that delivered for Barack Obama. 70% for Barack Obama. I mean, these are, they are going to New Hampshire. It's a very high-tech state. This is a very big breakthrough for Democrats to do that well with uh, postgraduate educated voters. Wolf was talking about the dismay that John McCain must feel, especially when he was really targeting those independents. But you see, they're blue here, which means they went for Barack Obama. That's right. The top groups are the most, where Obama had the biggest advantage, and his advantage shrinks a little bit until you get to the middle. Independents, blue, they voted 60% for Barack Obama. 38% for McCain. A big disappointment. They're the fastest growing group in the New Hampshire electorate. Men was a category that Barack Obama was targeting hard and had to do well in. And men in most states have voted Republican, but here in New Hampshire, 
uh, by a slight margin, 52 to 47, they went for John McCain, uh, sorry, for Barack Obama over John McCain. So pretty close there, but everywhere else, as you can see, uh, blue, Barack blue, Obama, blue, 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 a right? lot of blue on that map. Just a few red categories in New Hampshire. Which means Barack Obama taking New Hampshire. Bill, thank you. Wolf, you can see it right there in the, in the map. All right, so that. thanks very much. I want to take a look at some uh, numbers coming in, ballots coming in, and uh, some Senate races that we're watching very closely. Let's start in the state of Virginia. We've already uh, projected uh, that Mark Warner, the former Democratic governor of Virginia, will uh, win this contest against the former Republican uh, Governor Jim Gilmore. 59% so far for uh, Warner, 39%. For uh, Gilmore, 36 percent of the precincts in Virginia have reported. This is a pickup because uh, Warner, this Warner, will replace John Warner, the Republican, no relation, uh, as the next senator from Virginia. In Kentucky right now, uh, with 39 percent of the precincts reporting, look at how close it is. The uh, Senate Minority Leader, Mitch McConnell, with 51 percent. Bruce Lunsford, uh, the challenger, 49 percent. Very, very close. We are in no position to make a projection in Kentucky. This is one uh, race that the Democrats have uh, worked very hard to, uh, to capture McConnell, Mitch McConnell, fighting for his political life right now. In North Carolina, look at this, 8% of the precincts have reported. Kay Hagan has been challenging Elizabeth Dole, the incumbent Republican. Kay Hagan ahead. Uh, by 57% to 40%, but only 8% of the precincts are in. Uh, Kay Hagan making a very, very strong challenge. Elizabeth Dole fighting for her uh, political life as well. And in New Hampshire, a similar situation. John Sununu is the incumbent Republican. Uh, Gene Shaheen, the former Democratic governor, popular, very popular. 9% of the precincts have reported. 56% for Gene Shaheen. John Sununu, 41%. She's ahead by almost 10,000 right now with almost 10% of the precincts in. Uh, this is a race that we're watching very closely as well. Uh, let's go back uh, to uh, Campbell. Uh, and John King, uh, I think you're looking at North Carolina right now. Is that right, Campbell? We're going to look at all uh, of these races because we are getting a little bit of uh, more information as we look uh, more closely at the counties. And we're not calling any of them, as you mentioned yet, Wolf, except for the Mark Warner win in Virginia. But let's take a look at North Carolina. North Carolina, you see it. The red is the counties filling in for Senator Dole. The blue, the counties filling in for her challenger, Kay Hagan. This is one of the key counties in the state of North Carolina, Mecklenburg County. It's almost 9% of the state population. African-American population there, but also Campbell, the, the banking community that's been a lot of trouble there because of the financial meltdown, Wachovia Bank headquartered right there, a lot of economic issues there. Senator Dole is at the moment not performing as strongly as she needs to in Mecklenburg County. You come out here to the more Democratic counties and Hagan running. These are early results. Well, these counties, 72 percent out here. If the Democrat is winning out here, then the Democrat's in pretty good shape. But we'll watch the rest of these results as we come in. I want to go north to this. This race is a blowout, but I want to show something here. This is the state of Virginia. Ryan. This was a Republican state not all that long ago. Look what Mark Warner is doing to former governor Jim Gilmore. Jim Gilmore is not a nobody candidate. He was a former governor of this state in the past decade, and this is a blowout. The Republican Party in the state of Virginia is going to be having a long talk with itself about what to do Which next. Which well for Obama in Virginia. Certainly does. Wait for those numbers Certainly well. does. Now, Warner has his own personal popularity because Mark Warner left as such a popular governor, but the, the Republican Party of Virginia has a long many months ahead trying to figure out what happened there. This is New Hampshire, Campbell. 10% of the vote in. Gene Shaheen, the former governor there. This is another way to battle of heavyweights among Senate candidates. A former governor against an incumbent senator who is the son of a former governor and the former White House chief of staff. This looks kind of bleak. You say there's not much vote in, but most of the people live here. And actually, most of them live even further south. Conquered the capital. Most of them live here. Let's stretch this out a little bit and look. Many of you might be familiar with this area from the Democratic primary. This is Manchester, almost 9% of the population. And this is what Jean Shaheen needs to win. She's running very well in this blue collar area. This is where Hillary Clinton beat Barack Obama in the Democratic primaries. It's where the people live. You want to get them there. And one other key place is out here on the coast, Portsmouth, Democratic town out right near the coast of New Hampshire. And Jean Shaheen running well ahead there with about 40% of the vote in there. So at the early numbers suggest the Democrats are in for a strong night in New Hampshire. We will watch because this part of the state, more rural. Right. Sununu will do well up in mm -hmm. here. The question is down here where the people live, and one of the places we haven't seen anything yet is Nashua. Nashua. That's another big city in the state of, in the state of New Hampshire. But let's take a quick look at Kentucky, because this one, as Wolf pointed out, is still way, way too close to call. But this is a crucial seat. Mitch McConnell this trying to hold on to a seat here. He is the leader of Senate Republicans, and in a lead in a year when you know 
the President of the United States is largely being repudiated by the vote happening tonight. John McCain is in a very tough race, and let's assume for the sake of the argument, it's a long way to go, but if McCain loses, who is the leader of the Republican Party? Well, Mitch McConnell, the Senate leader, is one of the highest ranking Republicans in the country right now, and as you can see, he is in quite a race here. Let me erase this so you can see the numbers more clearly. This is one of these races, A, Obama put some money in the state. The Democrats put some money in the state because they would like to beat Mitch McConnell. It's also a place, though, where the leadership supported that financial bailout. Right. That was the thing the leadership had to do. And but some voters didn't like it. In yeah. many places, you do see a bit of a backlash for people wanting to blame somebody for what has happened to their 401ks and everything else and the uncertainty in the banking community, the uncertainty in the economy. If you're an incumbent, especially a re Republican incumbent on the ballot who supported that, you're having a tougher race. And this is an interesting map when you look at it filling in. The Democrat is doing well where he needs to. Out here, when you start getting out into these rural counties, Democrats putting up some respectable numbers. We're going to be watching this one for a while. Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader. If he were to lose tonight, then we would have a Democratic wave. Right. Um, still early. Again, the right. only race we've called is Mark Warner right. in Virginia. But as you said, things looking uh, very good for Democrats right, right now in terms of the balance of power. Wolf. Guys, thanks very much. So let me update you on these uh, votes that are actually coming in from these battleground states, including in Florida. Almost 40% of the precincts have now reported in Florida, and Senator Obama continues to maintain his advantage, 52% to 48%. He's up by 178,000 votes in Florida. 39% of the precincts have reported. We'll walk down to North Carolina right now. 12% of the precincts have reported. Senator Obama ahead here as well, 56% to 44%. Uh, ahead by 166,598. In Pennsylvania, still very, very early. The numbers are coming in slowly, but they'll pick up very, very quickly. The polls closed there at 8 p.m. on the East Coast. Less than 1% uh, are in. Uh, only about 12,000 votes have been counted so far. 65% for Obama, 34% for McCain, uh, a difference of 3,900. In Texas, the polls won't all, in the, in the entire state, won't all be closed until the top of the hour, 9 p.m. Eastern. But uh, about three, 3 million votes have already been counted in Texas, 51% so far for McCain, 49% for Obama, but only 1% of the precincts in Texas have been counted. Uh, we're going to continue our coverage, but first we have a projection. And this is a big one. CNN now projects Pennsylvania and its 21 electoral votes will be going for Senator Obama. This is a projection that the Obama camp desperately wanted, and the McCain camp desperately tried to secure Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a very, very important win. Even though Pennsylvania usually goes Democratic, Senator McCain made a major effort over these past several months to uh, try to win Pennsylvania. Uh, but unfortunately for Senator McCain, it wasn't to be. These are live pictures you're seeing from Grant Park in Chicago. They're watching us on the big screen there, and they can see they must be very excited. Uh, those are Barack Obama supporters with Pennsylvania. We project now going for Senator Obama. This is a state uh, that uh, they fought fiercely over these past several weeks. Senator uh, McCain a few weeks ago gave up on Michigan not that far away. It was in Pennsylvania that he made a major, major effort going from uh, the east part to the west part, uh, north and south Pennsylvania. But uh, Barack Obama will go forward and uh, win this uh, state. Uh, Candy Crowley uh, is uh, over at Grant Park in Chicago watching this. Uh, Candy, uh, they must be thrilled because this is a huge, huge projected win for Senator Obama. And what's really interesting is they know that. Uh, the fact is, of the matter is we have talked a lot about Pennsylvania, as you mentioned. It has been a Democratic state for some time, but John McCain put so much of his last-minute time and so much of those precious dollars into Pennsylvania, and this is a crowd that knows that. I mean, that's how closely people have been watching this race. I have been amazed from state to state to state how many people understood the whole process, knew which states were important, understood where John McCain had to win, where Barack Obama was doing well. I mean, the specificity of the knowledge of some of these voters has been amazing. I think we've seen that, obviously, uh, in our coverage and our numbers. And I see it out here on a daily basis, how really 
uh, in tune these voters are, and that's, I think, what you're seeing here, because Pennsylvania uh, got the biggest applause of all as you've been going through these states, calling them for either Obama or McCain. And clearly, inside Obama headquarters, although they expected this win in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania wasn't even on Obama's itinerary in the final days rolling up. He was totally in those Republican